Boys and girls, come hear my greeting. I hope you don't plan on sleeping, as tonight for a while you are dreaming. Evil aware waits, unearthed and creeping. Okay, I can't speak in rhymes throughout this whole video. Welcome to the second ever Undertales of the Crypt episode. In case none of you know, I made a mini-series about one year ago that was specifically for the spooky stuff on this channel, but it was cut short due to lack of motivation. Well, this time around, we decided to tell some stories from the internet. Spooky spaghetti, if you will. We also are going to show some of the gotcha edits we made just for the occasion. Let's get started, shall we? This first story is from Adam King. I had a purple Furby once, said its name was Toothpaste. My friends and siblings would call it Tooth or Teeth. Yeah, not a good sign. Well, one day I ended up putting it up on my super tall dresser next to my bed. Big mistake. Mostly forgotten about it for a few weeks, but sometimes I'd see it and it would just stare back. One night, at about 2 or 3 in the morning, in its ugly, scratchy voice, I heard it slowly say, And it began to walk forward slowly towards my bed. I open my eyes and see it on the edge of the dresser, right above me. It jumps off and lands on my face. I screamed, threw it into the closet, and ran crying to my parents. The next night, I threw it into our fire pit. Face melting, as in its distorted voice, it says, Goodbye, see you tomorrow. Okay, that is scary, even for me. I never had a toy do weird stuff, but I can guarantee you if I did, I would have the same reaction as you, or would have screamed very, very loud. This next story is by Autumn Rainfall on Reddit. After my sister accidentally kicked me in the eye at the pool, I decided to pull a prank on her and pretend she gave me a bruised eye. So I grabbed my mother's makeup palette and did the best I could to make a fake black eye, and it seemed believable. I walked up to her upstairs loft where my sister and her friends were hanging out, and I showed her my eye, and she obviously freaked out. I made her apologize before she wiped my eye and realized it was makeup. She punched me, and we had a laugh. I went downstairs to the bathroom to wash it off. As I was bent over to wash my eye, in my peripheral vision, I saw a small boy, wearing a striped shirt and boarding shorts. He had a bowl cut and was glaring at me with distorted facial features. Knowing there was no children as young as he looked at this party, I immediately stood up straight and looked towards him. He was gone. I backed up into the corner of the bathroom and looked around, my heart coming out of my butt. I ran out of the room and told my sister she helped get the rest of the makeup off my eye. After a few months had passed, I completely forgot about that event. And so did my sister. One evening, I went into my parents' room to collect a shirt I have left in there from the previous night. My parents' room and the bathroom are connected by a pair of double doors with frosted glass. Just like most of the doors in our house. I found my shirt and was on my way out when I noticed two small handprints on one of the frosted glass panes. I stopped myself to have a better look at it. Each handprint was as small as the palms of my hands. I felt shocked, but then I got shivers on every inch of my body as I remembered what happened after the pool party not too long ago. My heart sank and I ran into the kitchen, grabbing some cleaning supplies and desperately tried to get it off. But because it was frosted glass, it didn't come off at all and somewhat made it clearer. I decided to ignore it and it's currently still there. It creeps me out whenever I go into my parents' room, or especially the bathroom now. Only one word to describe this story, Autumn. Yikes. Our last story is by Jessica. During a huge storm, lightning struck a tree directly next to our house. It was like an explosion going off and woke us all up. We were all talking about what the heck just happened when we suddenly heard screams from downstairs, and then we heard ourselves talking. It took us a minute to figure out we were hearing the recording of our own reactions immediately after the lightning strike. For some bizarre reason, our answering machine has started recording and then played it back on full volume. Yeah, that last one was just to make you guys chuckle. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to like, subscribe, and have a spooky day! Bye!